Welcome to Physics 150 at Kalamazoo College. My name is Dr. Dave and I'm one of the four instructors that will be working with you this quarter as we help you understand introductory physics. We want to especially welcome our first year students, our second year first year students, our juniors who had part of a normal college year, and our seniors who everything of course is absolutely fine and normal. That is to say, we're still in the midst of a pandemic, folks, and so I thought making this video might make you feel a little bit more welcome um, to this winter quarter, especially given all the uncertainty that we're facing. First question you might ask is, where's my class? How do I find it? Well, if you're on Academy Street and you're looking up, you'll see familiar Hicks, where most of you first and second year students will have a dining plan. Um, here is our building. This is Olds Upton, which is referred to as OU for short. Uh, here's my band for today. Um, I think it's important that we all admit when we don't know things um, or could improve. So I'm going to start. This is one of the dorms. It starts with letter H. That's about as good as I get. Um, so now you know something? I don't know. As you walk up and you get outside of the door here, this is your view. And you can see Hicks across over there. Um, and you're going to want to head into this door. Many students do go around and head in on the other door, and that's just fine too, but most of our students, I find, enter through here. And as you open it up, it might be a little bit dark and intimidating, but it's not too bad. Here's a hand sanitizer station, should you need. And we're going to go straight through this door. We are not going to go up the stairs. However, if you do want to find the MPC or the Math and Physics Center, you would want to go up those stairs or on the elevator down the hall this way. So you come in there. Um, you're going to go through that door, and then you've got some choices. Okay. So many choices. You can decide this isn't for me and run out that door back here on your way to Hicks and contemplate your life choices, but we hope that you do decide to stay with us. And some students are going to go in this way into um, uh, Section 2. Uh, there's going to be a smaller classroom in this way. We welcome you to come down the hallway here if you want, but that's not where you want to go if you want Physics 150. Uh, instead, you're going to head down towards the elevator, which doesn't look like there's a classroom down there, but I promise you there sure is. So, hallways do look strange, especially when you're overwhelmed. And as we head down this hallway um, towards this elevator there, there will be a classroom that you will see revealed, hidden off to the left-hand side. So as you walk into this classroom, it might look a little bewildering. You'll hopefully recognize it by all the lab benches and equipment and even your fellow students. And this is where the majority of our students will be in uh, Physics 150. You will work in small groups of uh, four, three to four students at these tables, working with student TAs um, and instructors. If you went the other direction, so again, we come back into the hallway and here we're in section two with Dr. Siegel and we head into that room instead, this is what it looks like. And it comes in two options, one with window shades open and one with window shades closed. But that's where we're going to be. So hopefully not too intimidating and too overwhelming. It's not too hard to find. You come in on the first floor and you find your classroom. The only time you need to venture further into OU is if you want to come find us for office hours or if you want to come into the MPC. So what is this class? Well, let's talk big picture for a moment. We're going to meet with you four times a week. So everybody, we're going to meet with you four times a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's about 75 minutes. Thursday, we meet a little bit longer for an hour and 50 minutes. And in the Thursday sections, we're generally going to do a little bit more hands-on activities or oral assessments. Um, don't panic if, if oral assessment, you're wondering what that's all about. The general course structure is to be working in groups of three to four students. We will generally make these groups, but we're open to your feedback. And you'll be working with some student TAs and with professors in general. So what are we doing? There are four kinds of graded assessments. The first thing is showing up participating. If you show up and you participate, you get 16.5% of your grade. If you do the online reading quizzes, so there's one quiz per week, and we need you to do these by Sunday night, generally at midnight, although the first week you have until Tuesday. And then there's turned in assignments. So if you add all that up, that's 70% of your course grade. 70% is determined by showing up, engaging in earnest, participating with activities, and, and doing your best to get everything done. All right. So what's left? Well, the oral assessments. And this is the part that brings the greatest amount of nervousness um, among students, but I want to try to assure you that you don't need to panic. 
we're covering work you've already done. Now, I don't mean problems kind of like the ones you've already done. I mean, we're covering problems you've already done. We're going to say to you, go to week two, grab problem four, tell us why you did something. Or we're going to ask you a question about that problem. Um, these are generally graded as three, seven, or ten points. Most students get around a seven. Some students do really well and get around a ten, and, and then others get threes. Don't panic, all right? We're going to give you the first question we ask you. And we will practice this during the quarter. We find that we can tell how well a student's going to do almost immediately in the oral assessment. When we begin to ask questions, we can tell if you know the answers and if you've practiced. And what we're doing with our follow-up questions is really trying to plumb the depths of your knowledge and really understand what it is that you get. So the MPC is here. The TAs are here. We all want to assist you. We all want you to do your best in this course. Our grades last spring quarter were a bit higher than they've been in previous quarters, and we were great with that. We really felt that a lot of our students really got a lot out of it. So we're going to continue that model into this winter. Well, let's say you're saying, but I'm concerned about the oral assessments. Well, if you come to each class and participate, that's about 16.5%. If you do pretty well in the online quizzes, say 9.5%, you get 40 out of 43.5 from the assigned problems. And then you have three poor assessments. You just do terrible each and every time. You get 3%. That's a grade of 75% or a C. We're trying to make this course um, lower risk, lower stress. We want you to learn, and we do need to, unfortunately, use that graded model to help compel you to learn because everything else is out there competing for your time. But we're not trying to make this a, gruel, a grueling slugfest. We want you to learn physics. That's really our goal. So rest assured, if you're someone who every time you begin talking, your tongue just gets twisted up and you can never sort that back out, you can still hope to get a, a C in this course without too much trouble. All right. So with that being said, what, what else is going on? What's the course really all about? Well, I'm going to walk you quickly through the syllabus, although we're going to talk about this in your actual individual sections. No one's required to watch any of these videos, but if you wanted some more information, here you go. Um, we're studying everyday physics. We're studying everyday motion. We're studying why when something drops, does it take time to hit the ground? Why does it take that amount of time? We're trying to understand why when you hit the brakes, things in your car appear to continue forward. We're studying mundane, everyday um, interactions of objects. Okay, we're not doing anything weird like quantum mechanics. <clears throat> and in this course, we're not doing you know, electricity or magnetism. That's in our 152 course. This course is what we call classical mechanics, Newtonian mechanics. We're understanding things like gravity, friction, um, basics of energy, uh, angular momentum, and torque. So what are our goals? We want you to be able to use the ideas that we teach you, along with deductive logic and mathematics, to answer questions that you have never seen before. That's our goal. Here's a problem you've never thought about before. Now do something. Say something intelligent about it. Make sense of it. We want you to be able to make plots and extract useful information. So many of our students, we find, we put a graph in front of them, and they kind of look around, and it, it's as if they're wondering, does anyone else actually understand this? Because I don't. And that's not the experience we want you to have. We want you to feel comfortable asking those questions and really understand what's going on. So what we have learned in, through a lot of practice, not just us here at K, but at, at institutions across the world, is that pretty much the best way for me to, to give information to the most people at once is to lecture. The problem is, if we look at the uh, ways of learning, the fewest number of people learn, or the worst way of learning is sitting in a lecture and listening. So we have to find something kind of more in the middle. And that's why we do this, what we call semi-Socratic learning method. And that is, we call, it, we call it a studio method. So instead of standing and lecturing you all day, which you could have just read out of a book or watched dozens of YouTube lectures, we're going to put you in the classroom with fellow students, and you're going to work on problems together. You're going to be learning in real time with student TAs who've already done what you're doing and with professors who, you know, were once in your shoes. 
So there are four professors teaching this course, and I really want to stress that all four of us, Dr. Cole, uh, Professor Siegel, um, Tomaschnik, and myself, are here to teach you. Every one of us. So technically we have our own individual sections, although we might float around from section to section from time to time. Um, there are 82 students enrolled in the course currently. We are here for all 82 of you. So when we post our office hours, feel free to come see any of us at any time. First thing I want to give a note about classroom safety. In order to learn, you must be willing to allow yourself to be vulnerable. No one's going to do that if they don't feel safe. So we need you to feel safe in our classroom. That means physical safety, mental safety, and, and uh, most importantly, in my opinion, emotional safety. You have to feel that you are safe to make mistakes. You have to feel that you belong. You have to feel that this is the place for you, especially during this pandemic when all of us have been struggling so much. I cannot say this enough. Do not suffer in silence. If you are struggling, come see us. You are not supposed to struggle. You might hear people say, well, I worked, I had to work really hard to make it in physics. You should have to work really hard to make it in physics, right? I turned out okay because things were really hard for me, so they should have to be hard for you. Well, I'm going to give you a, a tip. If you think others should have to suffer because you suffered and turned out okay, you did not turn out okay. This does not have to be difficult. It's a challenge, sure. Are you going to have to work hard? Absolutely. But it does not have to be difficult. It does not have to be suffering. Speak out, talk to us, and come see us. All right. Again, we're going to cover a lot of this in class, but let's just talk about office hours. Any of the four instructors and some of our TAs will be hosting office hours. You are welcome to come to any office hours session that works for you. Please just show up. All right, core structure. <clears throat> As I said, we're meeting four times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 75 minutes and Thursday for 110. These are primarily working with groups. There's very little lecture in this course, again, because it's just not a good way to learn. All right. We are still in a pandemic. If you are unwell, do not come to class. We believe your assessment of your health. Right? We believe you. So reach out. Tell us you're sick. Tell us you're not well. If you email on me on a week and say, yeah, I just felt really crappy last week, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy out of me. Email me that day. The worst part about avoiding something is that you never feel better when it's over. So reach out. Be in steady contact with us, please. Most classes, we're going to give you some kind of an assigned problem. Generally, that assigned problem is, doing, is due the next day by midnight. All of the deadlines will be um, clearly posted on the syllabus, and we'll let you know in class. Those problems are generally graded out of uh, three different ways. If you do everything really well, meaning it's well organized, there's clear evidence that you understand your work, proper explanations, you're going to get one and a half points. If you demonstrate like some understanding, let's say you got the right answer. A lot of people think, well, I got the right answer. That's it. No, that, that's not it. Not for us. We really want you to be able to explain what you've done, right? Because you could have just seen what your friend had done and written that down yourself. It doesn't mean you get it. So you have to be able to really present your work if you want that one and a half points. If you just sort of scribble something out, that's going to be one point, even if it's right, because it's not clear what's going on. And if you're really just not getting it, it's not really clear what's going on at all, it's going to be a half point. And you're going to get these problems generally turned back to you very quickly, um, within a couple of days of turning them in so that you know right away how well you're doing. Every week we're going to have a reading quiz. Generally those quizzes are due Sunday night by 11.59. The first one will be Tuesday because we just started. Um, and those deadlines are pretty firm. However, there are a lot of moving parts and we are still in the middle of a pandemic. So if you do miss a quiz, email Dr. Dave, that's me, dwilson at kzu.edu as soon as possible, and I can reopen one quiz for, for you. All right. okay. As I said, we're going to do these oral assessments. Everything you need to know or don't want to know really is right there. We're going to do one thing a little different this term that you may not have heard about, and that is we're going to do what we call a reassessment. So on the Thursday of week nine, we're actually going to give you a written test. A lot of students say, well, I really wish that I had a written test, something I could just sit down and do. Well, so we're going to do that. So let's say the first two oral assessments do not go well for you and you really feel like, I know this a lot better. Or let's say after you do the oral assessment, you go, wow, I get it now. I wish I could go back and do it again. 
Well, week nine, you're going to get that chance. You're going to get that chance to sit down, do problems that you've never seen before, based on the same material you've done before, and make up any of those lost points that you need to make up. So we are really are trying to help you. And the question everyone's going to ask me is, will the reassessment lower my grade? No, your grade will not be lowered by the reassessment. So if you show up and you just totally bomb it, oh well, that's, that's what happens. Okay. We have the Math Physics Center. I want to be clear that, that these folks are amazing. They are super helpful. They will be there to assist you Sunday night to Thursday night from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. A lot of students just go there and do their homework. Now with social distancing and things like that, students might spread out a little bit more, but in general, make a plan to go, make a plan to get help. And we're gonna have one to two TAs also holding some additional office hours that we're gonna post on Moodle to give you some additional assistance. We have a Moodle site, hopefully all of you have joined that. You probably got to this video from that Moodle site, but just in case, there you go. Here's a summary of all the points which I presented on the first day. I thought you should be able to see it again. Here's the grade breakdown, pretty standard, nothing really uh, surprising, but you can sit down and look at the points and figure out like what kind of grade might I be getting. One thing I want to point out is the way we've structured the courses out of 100 points. So once you get to 80 points, you have a B minus. If you never came back to class again, you would have a B minus. I don't recommend that, but we, we work on that once you've reached that line that's your grade and you don't need to think about it anymore and then you just climb from there. All right. Course changes. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Things might change. We might have to move uh, assignments. A lot of things are up in the air right now. Um, we'll see where it goes. But any of those changes, we're going to do our best to communicate to you via email, um, via Moodle, in class, etc. If you have any academic accommodations that you need, please do reach out to the Associate Dean of Students. We need to, out of fairness, to get a letter from them. If you're having difficult work, difficulty working with them or you're not getting the uh, things that you need, feel free to reach out to us. We might be able to help you without um, a letter on some things. But the really big point is there needs to be a conversation back and forth. All right. Um, academic honesty, the, anything you turn in has to be your own. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you, you have to be doing your own work. I realize there's a slight bit of um, uh, outdated information here. The reading quizzes are not covered by this. This was prior language, unfortunately, for, um, pre for other work. However, what is still solid is the oral assessments. All right, The oral assessments are going to happen throughout the day. There's going to be people that start at 940, and there's going to be people taking them in the middle of the afternoon. You are not to speak about what the oral assessment covered. Right? Sometimes we have to use the same questions for multiple students. It's just not fair. If we ever find that, that's going to be a big problem. We're going to talk to um, uh, academic, or, um, the associate dean of students. The penalty for dishonesty in this course is an F. So we're trying to be as fair as we can. Don't mess around with this, please. All right. Diversity and anti-racism. Um, in this course, all people should be welcome and invited to participate. We will not tolerate any comments actions or innuendo that make people feel unwelcome or unsafe. This includes, but is not limited to, race, color, gender, ethnicity, national origin, sex, religion, socioeconomic status, and educational background. We must strive to be aware of historical biases and continuously monitor our thoughts and actions to ensure that our education is as barrier-free as possible so that all students can reach their full potential. Each professor in this course is committed to diversity and anti-racism. We admitted you to K because you belong at K. We did not do you a favor by admitting you here. You belong here. We want every one of you to be here. Each of you belongs. I want to also talk again about safety in the classroom. In order to learn, you need to open yourself up to new ideas and to stumble. However, to do that, you, you have to really feel safe. No one's going to mess around and try to make a mistake if they don't feel comfortable, right? As a kid, we all learn you got to get on the bike and fall down, right? But if we taught you how to ride a bike in college, everyone would watch me ride a bike. No one would get on it in the classroom. Everybody would go home and try to do it in their room and, and need help. That's not the way we learn. You have to make mistakes in the classroom. And all of that safety gets ruined when people... Um, uh, misconstrue um, comments when people feel unsafe, 
So please, take a look through this language and think about the way your actions impact not only the others around you, but the environment that you are a part of, all right? Group projects are for coursework. If you meet in someone else's dorm to work on an assignment, that's not an excuse to flirt with people or behave inappropriately. Safety is paramount. Letting people feel comfortable is paramount, all right? When you witness something, part of being a responsible member of our community is to interrupt it. If you see someone and you're not sure what's going on, ask them. Walk up to someone say, hey, how do you feel right now? Are you comfortable? It's awkward the first time you do it, but after you do it once or twice, it's no big deal. Some of you who have done your Title IX training have seen some of these steps. Um, directly confront if able. You hear someone making some, some stupid comments, say something. Now, you might be wrong. Everyone might be happy with what they're hearing, and they're going to tell you that. And then you just you step back. But it's our responsibility to make everyone belong to this college. All right. So please look through this. Another one I want to be really clear. Do not misconstrue help as affection. Really think about this, folks. We need to treat each other well. We need to make sure everyone belongs. Finally, I want to end with a land acknowledgement. We gather in the land of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi. Indigenous nations of the Great Lakes region are also known as the Ashen Anishinaabe, or the original people, and their language is Anishinaabewan. I'm so tongue-tied today. I apologize. Anishinaabewan. If I knew how to edit better, I would splice that together, but I don't. Kalamazoo is derived from an Anishinaabe word meaning to surround with smoke, um, and reflects the way the mist rises off the Kalamazoo River. This land was never ceded. Right? This is stolen land. We have to be aware of that fact. This is where we are. This is where our college is. And we need to think about what impact that's going to have on us and our educational environment. So I want to welcome you to Kalamazoo College. And I want to just end with saying, here is everything we're expecting you to do this term. Week one through on. What is the specific reading on a day? When is any given assignment due? Again, this assumes that Everything goes well with the pandemic and we're open all term and none of you are sick and, and you know, we'll deal with that as it comes up. But this is our term at a glance. All right. Thank you, folks. I hope this video was helpful. Bye-bye.